All right, unfortunately, this camera's not letting me zoom, but I'm gonna uh, run you through really quick. We've got the, um, the method. So we're gonna look at the method. We just wanna look at the, um, information. So this is our caffeine by IDMS. It's giving us a little bit of information. And now we actually end up here where we're interested. This is our um, auto sampler. So we program our auto sampler here. We select an, a, um, an injection volume. And then we can actually have washes and pumps. So this has to do with our, um, our wa how many times we want to wash in a solvent. Um, and then we can actually we can wash in the sample and then pump the sample and inject. Um, and then a post injection wash as well. Um, we have a standard injection. You can also do layered injections uh, to try and improve your efficiency. Um, this is our inlet, where we set the temperature. It also sets our, our, our flow and our pressure. We have a 25 to one split ratio. And this is our column information. And of course, our temperature program, where we're going from 175 degrees to 275 degrees over at 25 degrees per minute. Um, and uh, we hold there for six minutes to do our analysis. So it's a pretty quick run. Um, our auxiliary heater, this is the transfer line between the GC and the MS. Um, so that's all the GC information. This detector is the FID, which we're not using, so I didn't bother with that one. So move on to the next step. Our signal display actually comes from the mass spec. So this is our mass spec information. So we have a solvent delay of a minute. That's to avoid the um, uh, method, uh, avoid getting a solvent peak if it's too large. Um, particularly for us, it's methanol, so we want to avoid that. So we're doing a sim and a scan, so we get our total ion chromatogram here from 50 to to, a, uh, to 300 uh, math AMU as our mass range, and then we we'll also have a set of um, caffeine. So we have four ions we're measuring. We're looking at our caffeine 109 and 112, caffeine 194 and 197. So the 112 and the 197 are for the D3. And so all of these are mixtures, but we can actually get the total anchromatogram and the SIM when we do our analysis. Um, and this just shows what we're gonna monitor while we do the runs. And of course, where the method is. And so that's all set up here. So you can see it'll display the spectrum, the total anchromatogram, and then I just monitor 94 and 90, 194 and 197. Those are the largest ions um, as, they, as it's eluding. Um, and if we come over here and we take a look at our data analysis, I've already done some of the data analysis, so I'm going to pull up standard one. And so standard one, this is our total ion chromatogram. No, this is our BPC, sorry, I don't want to actually look at that. This is our BPC. This is the total ion chromatogram. So it looks a little bit hairy. You'll also notice that it's really large. These are the two, um, this is our SIM peak for 194 and 197. And the way we actually get this data initially as we go into our user chromatograms and we end up with, we have a BPC that we see first, which is basically just a, um, all of the ions together. Everything sort of overlapped. And so what we do is we do extract chromatogram. We can extract the total ion chromatogram or we can extract the individual SIM ions and we, so we can extract the 197 or any of the other ones as we want to. So I've already done this. And so instead of doing a time lapse, I'll just show you the results of it. So we end up with our TIC, our 194, and our 197. These are particularly of interest. And if you right click in there, you get the option to integrate the chromatogram, which I've already done. This is the 194 peak, retention time and area. And then down here, of course, we have our 197 peak with the retention time in the area. Do you want to look at the spectrum? Oh, so we have to extract the spectra. So we can go in here, we actually, I'm not showing the user spectra, so I just actually clicked on all three of these. So if you go in here, you'll notice, because this is the SIM, it only has 109, 112, 197, sorry, and 194 are the only peaks that actually show up in this. However, if we display our total ion chromatogram, and we go in here, you'll see we get the full spectrum, but this is a mixture of the caffeine and the D3. However, if we do a search, we still get caffeine because that's the closest match that it can get. Although you see we've got doubled up peaks here because we have our D3 mixture that's in there as well. Um, so our TICs are not as much of a concern and we're really not interested in the user spectra because we don't get any additional information that's useful. 
Um, so I'm going to pull up all of these and uh, I will compile all of the uh, um, data for you. Again, we don't want our TIC. That's standard two. Standard three. Not interested in the TIC, and we have standard four. Oops, get rid of the wrong one here. So we have the standard one, two, three, and four. So one, two, oops, I got rid of the wrong one. We want sim, okay. So we have 94, 97, 97, 94. As we come down here, we have 94, 97 for the standard three and standard four. And then, of course, we want our samples. So we have the T. BPIC looks crazy. And again, these look really wonky because they have a bunch of matrix in there. So they look a little weird. And we have the Gatorade Fusion. We'll open that up. So here, just so, just so you know, like the total ion chromatogram for this looks like that. Really noisy, you actually can't even see anything. Um, this is where our peak is, um, but when we use our, um, uh, and so it's basically buried in the noise, however, when we use the um, selective ion monitoring, it can actually identify the peaks because it gets rid of all this background noise because it's, it doesn't see them. So again, that sim, sim is a huge advantage in get rid of, getting rid of noise and, sh and revealing, uh, revealing peaks um, when you have their, their characteristics ions. Um, so again, these have all been integrated. And so if we look at our little peak windows, terribly sorry there. Hmm. Oh, there we go. So we have our peak lists here. They only show up one at a time as you click on them. So I will, uh, I'll, I'll get that data for you and I'll compile it into a table and you'll be all set to work it up once I get Robert and Zach to give me their original measurements when they made their standards. Thanks.